We're at an Asian garden that is quite stunning with my friend Cherie Hidalgo. Cherie, you, this is your baby. It is. It is. You have you you've nurtured this from nothing from to nothing this. to flat land that ran out to the shop. This straight flat land. We've moved in a lot of dirt, a lot of trees, pathways. Uh, these Japanese maples. Um, the, perfect for an Asian garden. It is, it is. And I propagated these. That's one of the, these are my babies. I've pruned them over the years. Uh, this one, you can, I, they're just different shapes of the same tree. But then this is the Acer uh, Japanese maple. And, you know, it just provides the covers and the colors that I love as part of this garden. Well, what I like about this is when you, it's, it's, it's peaceful. It is. But it's also active because it's got lots of things going on in the garden. It does. It does. The pathways make it accessible and it's there's little secret gardens throughout this whole area. So, you know, you can step over the mound. You can see the and ferns. I love ferns. Obviously, you can see them. Hostas. All the color that that I try to bring into the gardens. It's um, it's peaceful for me. And like you said, it's active because then you can cut over in front of the pond, over the bridge, and it's just something that I enjoy doing almost every day. Of course you have to with this kind it, of yeah, garden. It's, you it's have a, to it's a it. moving, changing it is, it garden. Is. So you've got this great little bridge here that, do. that comes over your pond. It, yes, and it's, it's peaceful because you can hear the water moving and um, I try to incorporate as many annuals in here to add some color, but the um, calla lilies seed themselves. Yeah. So, you know, those came in without me having to touch them. Aren't those the best kind? They are. They are. <laughs> and then last year, I kind of played with this. This is one of those white trumpet vines, and he popped up, and I thought, well, you know, instead of pulling him out because he doesn't belong here, I just ran him up this little arbor thing, and he will, he will continue to put off white blooms uh, throughout the summer. So part of the design that I like, part of the Asian garden, is that I can find some of these random concrete pieces. And we, we put electric in all of them. So at night, there's these random lighting fixtures out here that adds all this subdued lighting, which is, it's very sweet and it's very touching. Well, you because you want to enjoy your yard and garden all the time, not just in the yeah. daytime. Sit, sit in the bench and listen to the water and have coffee or a drink. It's all good. So let's go over and see how you've also incorporated house plants. Yes. You've got ups and downs. I do. It's dimensional. And part of your ups and downs incorporates plants that you just kind of plop in I a do. place I do. to add some interest. Uh -huh. Part of it is because uh, they won't survive during the winter, so I have to move them in. But also because, like you said, they provide the flow that I always like to have, the highs and the lows. Um, and you've even done that with your trellising to kind of... Right, right. These, of course, are natural ferns, and the hostas are natural. They're not house plants, but I do, I do. You'll see a lot of house plants over here that I've tried to work into, uh, into the gardens. A railroad garden. I don't think I've ever been to a railroad garden. Well, you have now. <laughs> you have now. Um, I grew up close to a railroad train, like a half a block from a railroad, and so you'd listen to the to the sounds of the trains coming through every day, and uh, play on the tracks. So we, I had this vision in my head of what a garden would look like around uh, all of this stuff that I've collected over the years, all the train memorabilia. So uh, it began with just by trying to find the right pieces and moving the land, you know, bringing in enough earth to kind of give it the elevations that I'm looking for and to be able to incorporate the pond. Um, I feel like that I'm in an old abandoned station and Mother Nature's just kind of taking it over beautifully. It has, and you know, I mean, and so next year when you're out here, you're gonna see that I've changed it because that big plant right there is coming out. It's too big. So, I mean, Mother Nature has a way of doing things that you never really expected her to do with some of these plants. So, you know, blueberry bushes, they thrive. Uh, my grandkids get out here and they pick blueberries until they don't want any more blueberries, and then the blue jays take over. You've got 
quite a bit of memorabilia that adds different levels of interest to this garden. So when you first started collecting, did you have this garden in mind? I did not. What happens is when you have big pieces like this crossing, this railroad crossing, or some of these signs, the lights that flash, it's, you don't have room for it in your house. So, and they're out door pieces, so right. why not build a garden around it? I mean, honestly, and it's being treasure to my heart being around railroads, that it was easy to design. And I love water, I love the moving water. So it was easier for me to create and design this. And then every year it changes, it modifies itself. You know, Harry and I built this uh, train depot. We sit out there and we have drinks and we have coffee and we just enjoy the sound of nature around us every day. He put in the uh, bubble rock garden and that's so peaceful. And he made it, I mean, we've made it, but he's got the tools to be able to make it where you hear the, the water just kind of boiling off of <laughs> the rocks. So it's, you know, it's whatever you want to do in your garden. That's what I wanted to do in my garden and it's been it's just been perfect for me to stay busy. Well, it, the, anything that brings back memories yes. of your childhood is, is just wonderful in a garden. It because is. that's that's where usually most of us as kids first started gardening with our parents. It's exactly right. And grandparents, yeah, my grandmother is the one that got me started in gardening. And um, I'm thankful for that every day because it's a passion that I have. It, well, you can tell it's quite Thank stunning, you. and I love the way you've incorporated new and old together. Yes. It's beautiful. It is. A lot of old pieces out here. I've, I've come by some of these railroad pieces by diving into dumpsters because somebody threw something away, and I saw something I recognized in the dumpster sticking out. And it's like, that looks like a railroad sign. I think I'm going to have to go check that out. Climb up it. See it. Oh, yeah. I think I need to take that home with me. <laughs> so it's all been good. It all adds to the collection. It's got a place yeah. in your garden, it doesn't does. it? It does, it does. Well, I normally have an occasional turtle in my yard, but you have some characters in your yard and garden that are quite different from mine. I do, I, yeah, and I really, really enjoy my characters. They're one of a kind. Well, there's thousands across the country probably, but for me, they're one of a kind. It was a collection that I started several years ago, and uh, my husband, we buy them in various conditions normally definitely needing restoring. Right. And so uh, he does all the labor intensive work. He does, you know, the striping of his arms and his, I do some of the detail work. But, you know, it's one of those things that because of the colors and McDonald's brings back some kind of nostalgic yes. feeling for me. Uh, the first one I ever collected was this Ronald that's over here um, with the signs, the arch signs. And it just started there. I don't know, you know. If well, it's just it's, fun. It is fun. You know, you, I, I've never been to a garden where Ronald has greeted right. me That's on right. my entrance to the, well, to the garden. Like I said, I've got a Ronald, I've got Ronald Jr., I have Ronnie, I have Ron. <laughs> I mean, I'll just come up with any combination of Ron names and he's out here. He's I out believe here. it, I believe yes, it. Yes, yes. Well, it's what's, What's nice about it is, is that it's different. It is different. And that's it's, that's kind of the bottom line too. My gardening is what I enjoy yeah. doing. It's, you know, I have the traditional plants that a lot of people have with the bloomers, the perennials, the annuals. I, I do a lot of that, but a lot of it is just what I enjoy with adding things to the garden for attraction. You know, the old truck, it's a 47 Ford truck that came out of a junkyard. They hauled it up here for me. I started decorating around it. And it, you know, so you see the things that I've got attached to the to the truck now. It's a it's a flower truck basically, but you just, it's part of the design in my head because we like old things. Yes. And my husband restores and builds old cars and old gas pumps, and we have a bunch of this stuff all the way around the house. So it's just something that keeps us actively busy. We enjoy it a lot. We enjoy being around it. So, and our friends enjoy it. Our family enjoys it. So, you know, it's, it's something that's it's good for all of us. Well, thank you for letting us come and see your collections. I'm going to add a S to that because you've got so many of them. It's just been a treasure trove of artifacts from my childhood. And I, mm. I so appreciate the fun yes. of it. Good, good. And it's great to share it with you and other people who enjoy gardening and collecting. Yeah, you've incorporated them both, it's yes, perfect. Yes, I think so, I enjoy it. 
For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.